a lot of the focus on how we fight the pandemic in the last few months has been very focused on, you know, social distancing and wearing masks and washing your hands. And those things are all really, really important. But it's becoming increasingly kind of clear that ventilation is also really important to working or uh, meeting up with people in a poorly ventilated space is a uh, pretty high risk, especially if you're doing things that are very kind of vocal, like you're speaking loudly or you're singing. And so we kind of wanted to review some of the recent work that's been done on how ventilation, which is sort of a very well established um, field, might interact with uh, kind of COVID transmission. And like, what do we know? What don't we know? And what are the open questions? Research on ventilation has been going on actively in the UK and elsewhere since the late 80s. And the interest really over the last uh, almost 30 years has been on low energy buildings because of concerns with energy consumption and impacts on climate change. On the other hand, if you're concerned with uh, pollution, which is an increasing concern, but in particular with the spread of a possible airborne disease, you really want to know inside the building where the air is going from one place to another. For example, from an infected person to someone else. It matters very much then what the airflow patterns are within the space. Where your breath goes when you breathe it out. What happens when you move? So you create a wake behind you. Where does your breath go under those circumstances? How much do you waft the air around when you walk around? That matters hugely here. And that's not being considered before because you wasn't part of the energy qu equation. Right. So there's a completely different emphasis here, which is the reason why we wanted to do this work, because we felt understanding those issues, which is another side of the same problem about how you ventilate buildings, was very critical for this current pandemic. There's two main types of ventilation, uh, displacement ventilation and well-mixed ventilation. Either you bring in uh, cool air through uh, vents at the bottom of the room and you remove warm air through the top of the room um, and that can be forced mechanically through fans or just by the fact that because the air is warmer it likes to rise and then it goes out the vent at the top. And then the other type of ventilation uh, which is very common particularly in mechanical systems in that case, what you're trying to do is you keep the room well mixed and maybe you have an inlet at the ceiling and an outlet near the floor or um, just significant velocities to kind of try and keep things well mixed. But there's a lot of discussion at the moment, like which of these two types of ventilation is best for uh, preventing COVID? Um, and it's been really kind of interesting uh, seeing that play out because there are still lots of questions that we haven't really answered. And if we don't understand these, then we're not going to be able to make kind of sensible recommendations to people about how they can reduce transmission. One of the challenges about measuring how we breathe and how it interacts with the with the environment around us is actually to be able to visualise that and that just sort of using a computer model is going to miss out on a lot of the details. So what we did here is we used a technique called synthetic Schlieren which we developed about 30 years ago now which is able to visualise very small changes in the refractive index of the air. It's a bit like looking over the top of your toaster. You see the things behind it shimmering. And from that, we can very easily sort of look at the conviction from our, our hands or our face and our heads, and also from our breath. And so every time we breathe out, we are breathing out warm air, which is then propagating away from us. If we're breathing through our mouths, as then it's obviously going to be going primarily outwards. If we're breathing through our nose, it's going to be directed more downwards. When, when it, we are speaking, it will depend a lot on what we're saying as well. So things like b and p sort of really produce quite strong bursts that propagate it a long way. Our mouths are continually changing the, the shape as we the, form the different words and different syllables. And all this has an impact. If you're laughing, it's, it's really the, the worst of all pictures. Because unlike the breathing out through your nose, the air's not coming down slowly. Unlike breathing out through your mouth... Well, you're actually breathing out really quite rapidly when you laugh. You're breathing from deep in your lungs, so the air which is deep in your lungs may contain lots of infectious particles which get expelled. And a long way, that air which is containing highly infectious particles is going to be able to escape out of your body plume and out into the environment. 
So unfortunately, laughing's not such a good medicine at the moment. Now in contrast, if we wear a mask, then we can still see the heat coming up from the body, but the, the heat from breathing or speaking is very much confined. So when you put the mask on, then inevitably there's going to be a gap at the top. You, although you make the, the nose piece try to fit your nose and to stop there being a gap there, there will be a gap. Because as you breathe out, the air pressure on the inside is going to push the mask a little bit off your face. The louder you talk, the more it's going to push it off, the more the air is going to escape. But at least it's going to be escaping up your face and be entrained in this heat from the body rather than projected out. I think my um, personal favourite take-home message from this is really just open a window. Um, I think it is sort of that simple. And just have an awareness of the space that you're in and uh, how well ventilated it is. Don't have meetings in rooms that have no obvious source of outdoor air. I think the ventilation is going to be sort of become more and more of a... a a topic that people are going to really have to think about when it comes to this pandemic.